Sometimes in life, we tend to take things for granted. When we are so used to things, they tend to become simple and ordinary in our lives. And it is only when we are deprived of these things or it is only when these things or persons go away from us that we realize the worth and importance of their existence or their presence. And that is what exactly today's readings tell us. Now, sometimes even in a normal Christian living, we may be following a number of rituals, we may be saying a number of prayers. But we see that if we don't do it wholeheartedly, it tends to become a kind of a ritual, a kind of something that is done for the sake of doing. And in a way, it loses its purpose, it loses its meaning. And therefore today Jesus emphasizes that whatever we do, we need to do it wholeheartedly. But he gives it a human touch. And in this way, he basically says that we need to accept each one as they are. We need to accept people for who they are rather than who we want them to be. And sometimes we see that even though a person may be great, because of the prejudice that we have, we tend to put the person down. We don't value that person. And therefore, today's reflections will deal with all this. And all this, whatever Jesus wants to tell us, regarding accepting others we'll try to uncover during today's episode of tea time with the word but before we can do so let us take a look at the readings for monday of the third week of lent now, today's first reading is from the second book of the Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. And the gospel is from the gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verse 24 to 30. So, the story of Naman, which is there in the second book of the Kings, teaches us so much about the value of sacramental economy. Now, we see that Naman was a man of great power great status and he sets out with a vast allotment of wealth with a lot of money he goes around in order to find a cure for his leprosy and therefore we see that with all the resources he goes out hoping that by doing so he might be able to buy his way towards healing his leprosy so Ultimately, we see that his whole approach is that by giving money, he would be able to buy some medicines that would help heal his leprosy. And we see that by doing so, he tends to exhibit a kind of a rudimentary faith in God's healing power. But it is obvious that his faith has not gone beyond the level of his own self-interest. And as a result of it, we see that he tends to view his interactions with God in terms of a kind of a transactional relationship, something that you would have as a contract. And we see that sometimes we too fall prey to the same kind of tactic. We say that if we are granted this, we will do X number of things. And this we see that becomes more of a contract rather than a covenant but we see that with god everything is a covenant because everything is bound by love everything is bound by hope and trust and the very fact we make it a contract we tend to exclude other aspects such as love faith and trust and then the emphasis becomes on ourselves we tend to think because we have done x number of things we deserve to get what we want. Rather than placing our faith and trust in God, we tend to place our faith and trust in ourselves and in our material possessions. And this is exactly what Jesus warns us 
in today's gospel. Now we see that Naman too had the same problem. The language that he used was the language of a contract and not the language of a covenant. And that is why we see that Naman becomes indignant when Elisha the prophet tells him to do something humble and seemingly tribal. Now Naman would have probably expected that Elisha would have told him to do something dangerous, maybe something quite adventurous in order to get his cure. But when he is told to do something very simple, he seems that it is less important. But nonetheless, we see that he does it and he is healed, he is rewarded. And that is what today's first reading warns us against. Seemingly simple things in our lives need to be done with the same value and the same importance. And then we will be rewarded. Our faith and trust will be rewarded. And sometimes we too can fall into the same pragmatic or the same worldly kind of thinking in the way we approach the sacraments. For example, we may sometimes think, do we really have to confess that often? Or sometimes we may also do certain things, but just for the sake of doing. And therefore we see that like the Jews in today's gospel, we risk finding ourselves victim of the old age saying that familiarity breeds contempt. Because we see that sometimes we are so familiar with things that we don't give it importance in our lives. And in today's gospel, we have the same episode where Jesus was not valued. Why? Because they said, Jesus, we have seen this uh, person grow in our own eyes. We have seen him grow from a small boy to a man. There's nothing great in him. And therefore, they were not able to accept what Jesus was doing. And as a result, they were not able to receive any of the miracles that Jesus performed. We can ask ourselves, do we too have the same attitude? Do we devalue others in our lives? And therefore, looking at today's readings, one thing remains a common theme that God works in mysterious ways. God does not work directly. He works in and through others. And sometimes even through ordinary people, God indirectly tells us or communicates things with us. And that is why when we say that we need to be alert and attentive to the signs of the time, it also means that we need to give equal importance to all people who come in our lives because we do not know through whom God may be communicating things to us. And we see that so was the case during the time of Jesus. As we know, the mission of Jesus was for all, especially for the lost and the least. In this regard, while Jesus was trying to form an inclusive community of God by bringing the non-Israelites, the poor, the tax collectors and sinners in the care of God, he found himself unaccepted in his hometown. Now it wasn't something new that had happened to Jesus alone, as most of the prophets of the Old Testament also had to undergo the same fate. Now, the villagers of Jesus' hometown seem to find it very difficult to accept him as the prophet. Why? Because as I said earlier, they saw Jesus grow in their own village, in their own hometown. And therefore, Jesus responds to their objection by narrating the great works of God to the prophet Elijah and Elisha amidst the non-Israelites. And the explanation of Jesus, in fact, only added fuel to the fire. We see that the people were so angry that they wanted to throw him off the cliff. But Jesus was able to escape. Nevertheless, the important thing to be noted here is that God's mercy embraces everyone and no one is left behind. It means that one's caste or creed or nation or gender should not come in the way 
of experiencing the love of God. And therefore, as we reflect on these readings, we pray for peace and equality that we may be able to accept each other without discriminating them on various grounds. And now we can probably reflect on these questions that would help us to internalize today's readings. Do I exhibit a transactional relationship with God? Do I pray and fast and give alms with the expectation that I am thereby earning and deserving of more blessings? How can I begin to grow beyond the transactional and instead foster a relationship with God based on disinterested love? Reflecting on these questions will help us to understand today's readings in a much deeper level. And therefore, let us pray for peace, let us pray for equality, let us pray for the grace that we may accept each one as they are and most importantly, that we may be able to recognize Jesus in those around us, giving everyone equal value for who they are. Amen.